Good morning. This is Mandy and Bobby. I I keep saying of Magic Mondays, but I suppose there's like lots of things we're doing and creating and I don't really know what the full capture is yet. And it might change in the next couple of months too. (laughs) Bobby and I are just doing a check-in, holding some intentional space um, to just be present with each other in our exploration of the magical, sensual, spiritual self conversation experience. We have, well, I would say several women registered in this moment between our presenters and the women who have stepped into the experience, which feels like all of a sudden real, (laughs) for the record, (laughs) Uh, and really exciting. And, And part of, I might have said this somewhere else on another recording, but part of what, um, I'm looking for from this experience is part of what we talked about originally in terms of the reciprocity and the collaboration, staying in the conversation. So giving ourselves these pockets of time to check in, go live our lives and then come back and then go live our lives and then come back and creating intentional space where we can kind of capture that for what the themes and the ideas and what are what's presenting in our worlds are. And I think that that's important to note for this five week experience is that is my intention to um, gather once a week on the Sunday and then we go out into our lives and and then you know as our lives unfold we start to, to have ideas and notions and things stir up and then checking in on the private Facebook page sending an audio clip a video clip words a poem dance an interpretive dance and share it with the group <laughs> like whatever that is Excuse me, and 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 it be just a real uh, massive crucible for flow, and and stepping in and stepping out and stepping in and stepping out in those ways. So I appreciate the time that we've already had the last few weeks to do this. It holds me, it holds me in like a a held sacred space. So it's not separate. I get this like aura of magical spiritual sensual I go out into my world I experience my world as magical spiritual sensual or perhaps I realize where I am experiencing it where I didn't before how else it equates in my world um, we were just talking about I was sharing an experience I had with my teenage son last night and you know it's an unexpected place to have a sensual connected sacred beautiful space with a 16 year old boy Um, I think all too often we think of our spiritual, sexual, sensual, sacred, magical, you know, whatever that is, self, um, as a physical piece of sexuality and that that's the only way we express. And my hope and desire is that during the course of the next five-week exploration and beyond, um, that we are each able to reclaim our sexuality, what it has been what it will be moving forward, but coming to know that full cyclical um, continuum experience where it's not just this or that, it's all of it infused into each of the other layers. And so so I would have said a few years ago that my sensual experiences can only be held or experienced with my partner who I share a bed with, not necessarily strangers and friends and my children, especially a 16-year-old boy, but a moment of clarity, a moment of rawness, a moment of vulnerability, a moment of innocence and and genuine connection with him last night left all of, I read, I heard you this morning because I re-listened to our thing, like the volume you said was tuned up on all your senses. I could feel that in my experience with him and knowing how special and unique and not often that happens. It was in the moment and really bringing my breath back to my body and just as we were holding hands, just feeling what that is and feeling him through his hands and allowing that to just be that and and fully fill the space of the moment of what was happening. All too often my brain gets involved and then I start thinking and overanalyzing and I just was really clear this was something super magical not to be missed. I think about the phones now. um, When I say that, I think about how we'll go to our kids' plays or our kids' like school shows or like things that they're doing 
and we're watching it through the lens of the camera. We're not even there feeling and smelling and listening and feeling the tingles and the excitement for them and the nervousness for them because we're so busy in our logical mind recording things. Last night was one of those moments that was unfiltered, un, it was raw, pure intimacy. And it was amazing. And there was something that sparked us to start recording. And I have no idea where I was going to go with that. Uh, it'll pop or it won't. But that's sort of my check-in this morning of where I'm coming to you from. Just really luxuriating in those moments as they're coming. This morning we're eating uh, breakfast. I had sort of started my husband brought us um, like a homemade sausage patty and an egg and I bought potato what do you call them patties or something and even that addition he came down and asked Bobby like do you want some and there was a hesitation you can speak for yourself but there was a hesitation in her answer and then she did and like just the sensuality and the experience of sitting and eating a beautiful warm breakfast as we're, we're there's nothing to do there's no agenda there's just this space and time and filling that with things that enliven my senses is that isn't it's not normal like we we do this as part of how we live but I've experienced numerous gatherings and with women individually and separately and none of that exists it's just this logical let's talk about you know the content of our world surface yeah surface level yeah <clears throat> So, being immersed in this way of living, not separate from this experience that mm -hmm. we're creating, seeing the magical, spiritual, sensual, sacred self. God, I could throw in so many S's. Um, <laughs> in my day-to-day -day living, in my world as it presents itself, and even the muck is so much more potent and mm -hmm. juicy and so much to offer me. All I have to do is be willing to see it, stay with it, pay attention to it, and take it for the magic that it is. And that for me, like I've said a thousand times, I hate small talk. Mm -hmm. I hate surface level. I hate anything that offers me no depth. Mm -hmm. Like I really have no time for this. These moments these are the magic and they're really just blocks of time in a calendar mm -hmm. and I just show up mm -hmm. and the experience of do you want something to eat and checking in and hell yeah I want something to eat that looks delicious oh should I say that uh yep <laughs> hell yeah thank you please <laughs> um and watching it unfold in my daily life so um one of the things I've I've bugged my partner about is we're not connected, and I'm air quoting, because mm -hmm. we're so busy co-parenting and, and co-living and doing all the things in all the land that there's no time for connection and realness and sensuality and slowing down and tasting the tastes and feeling the feels and, and the full visceral tactile experience of mm -hmm. living. And so somewhere in all of this, Sundays have become our check-in, mm -hmm. naturally effortlessly they just somehow fit in and uh, they've been beautiful and to hear his dropping into his body mm. and actually checking in and offering some depth to his content mm. is like profound and so the little humans the big and the little humans that happen by in those check-ins if you happen by you're checking in. So when mm -hmm. I say to you, how you doing? The response is not good. Mm -hmm. If your response is good, you're evicted from my <laughs> check-in. <laughs> you can try again later. Like, really drop into yourself. And it's been great because they happen by quite often. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the adult, you know, he'll try for the, oh, I'm good. Oops, I picked the wrong time to come by. <laughs> but he'll... He will engage and yeah. he will drop in. And <clears throat> so homeschooling my children, and I've discussed at length how 
that's not the language I would use for what I'm doing. I don't mm-hmm. really have language for what I'm doing other than allowing my intuitive self to be with my children in a way that feels meaningful, mm-hmm. period. And they don't seem to have a catchphrase for that. <laughs> That's a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> so just watching that unfold. And so like always, I'm always reading like a handful of books at mm-hmm. a time and I take little bits from everything. Um, but one of them is Balanced and Barefoot, which is about... Um, unstructured free play for children Mm -hmm. and that has always resonated with me which is why I rarely come home in the summer because they have the freedom to just Mm -hmm. be and play all day long they are dirty little mugwumps by the end of the day Mm -hmm. and I love them so much more Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) when they're like having their own experiences and just really truly living Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'm also reading Radical Unschooling and again it's nice to have language for what I've been doing and so she shares her stories and her experiences and and it's just really been another piece of the puzzle to allow me to see kind of the intentions I'm setting Mm. for my existence and allow the freedom to just let the the fear mongers and the naysayers to Mm -hmm. just I don't care in reality I've never cared so sometimes I get caught up in the oh well what if I oh well what if Mm -hmm. what if what if well what if oh if I really really fuck them up I'll figure it out Mm -hmm. or I'll say sorry Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) I'll own it whatever Uh, but what I see is not fucking anything up it's like this beautiful unfoldment of who they are the Mm -hmm. things that I've witnessed them do and ask about and self-initiate the learning and even even the adult like he makes clothes from scraps of things Mm -hmm. and that's trickled down to the little people so you know Leyland's creating full pieces of clothing hoodies and pants and and Seamus is creating a new sleeping mask for himself because mm-hmm. he loves his sleeping mask. Mm-hmm. And then he made one for Zane last night. And just all I have to do is provide the material mm-hmm. and step back. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. offer a little bit of guidance or, you know, um, commiserate when you poke your finger because yeah. that's real. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like, whatever. And all I... All I have to do is step out of the way. Yeah. And um, I was texting with a girlfriend and uh, the other day, and she's like, I'm in awe of all of you. And I was like, oh, like, thank you. I'm going to take that off because right now I'm having, like, this shitty I can't do anything right moment, mm-hmm. whatever it was. I can't even remember. But, like, I was like, I'm going to take that off and I'm going to roll with it mm-hmm. because, yeah, I am doing something great. And watching my children be the most magical, sensual, spiritual versions of themselves, mm-hmm. fully connected in the moment, has been beautiful. So my littlest is a challenging human. Like, he wants what he wants when he wants it. I've taught him to be a free thinker, and I've taught him to be a free-range child. So, you know, when you try and tamp that down, it's a completely explosive experience. Mm-hmm. and again softening into that and being like oh yeah like what do you need and so I've been doing a lot of dream work and so we talk about dreams a lot a lot a lot in my house and sometimes before my eyes are even open he's relaying his dream and I catch bits and pieces as I'm still (laughs) drifting in and out of my own dream world but a lot of his dreams are fighting something Mm. he is always fighting something Um, for a while it was trolls Um, it's been Um, all sorts of things like across the board and so I've been listening to these not really putting the pieces together Mm -hmm. and so the other day I'm like why are you always fighting something in your dream Mm -hmm. and he's like because they won't let me do what I want oh my god I was like holy fuck like sucker punch me in the solar plexus like holy shit 
And I've been doing that to you all along in different ways. Mm -hmm. Like, even as free range as I am mm -hmm. and like broad viewed, like I'd like to think I'm a pretty chillax person. <laughs> and the recognition that he's still internalizing it as yeah. I have to do absolutely everything that everyone else wants all the time period I was like oh my word so softening into that and where where does it matter where mm -hmm. do we actually not have choice and we have to do xyz not very often mm -hmm. actually is there no give yeah. and no like okay so how can I make this easier for you yeah and I always use the language of so how can I honor you while still honoring me because I'm not willing to not honor myself to honor you so where are we going to come in this mm -hmm. and having that conversation mm -hmm. well I'm willing to give here I'm not willing to give here and they are fully welcomed into that conversation mm -hmm. is that my rules are use your words and own your shit mm -hmm. yeah so it's been really neat really humbling mm -hmm. to watch the experience unfold and knowing they're not separate mm -hmm. so I'm engaging in this magical spiritual sensual mm -hmm. sexual sacred self experience mm -hmm. and they get the ripple effect yeah, of that they so they are in effect engaged in this experience absolutely as well and it's beautiful my relations with my partner have mm -hmm. taken on a softness and a kindness and a <laughs> we were having a conversation about something a couple weeks maybe a month ago um, something I had read or heard or something um, about the expectation of I want sex so you have a partner so they're gonna do it mm -hmm. and I'm like wouldn't it be different if we just like posed it as so I'm having this like sensual experience that I'd like a happy ending from so mm -hmm. I'm gonna go deal with that if you'd like to engage in that with me mm -hmm. I'll be upstairs mm -hmm. and just putting it out there as like an invitation to engage mm -hmm. in a sacred sexual mm -hmm. experience instead of I got this need you want to scratch it mm -hmm. you know like yeah and so we were well there's choice in that yeah there isn't choice it's an expectation otherwise yeah for sure and so we were kind of joking about the ways in which we could like present that mm -hmm. as like options or you know like put that on the menu and yeah. but just having that conversation yeah. is huge I think well and and the other piece of that too is yeah and you're not invited <laughs> in the moment <laughs> you're not right? invited right yeah because it is an experience with self first yeah and being perfectly okay with that. Yeah. I'm and and this... not being something to come between you, but something yeah. that enriches that experience because you're honoring self. Yeah. Because the timing doesn't always work. And that's not always where you want to head. Yeah, for sure. And sometimes it's not about someone else. Sometimes it's all about me. Yes. I used to tell people back when I had a lot more spare time in my day, mm -hmm. if I was feeling sensually sexual mm -hmm. I would dress up for myself I would like make it this whole beautiful experience mm -hmm. of pleasuring myself mm -hmm. and it like people would be like you dress up for yourself yeah why am I not worth that yeah like that's a visceral experience mm -hmm. that's like yeah I'm gonna go the extra mile for myself why would I just go the extra mile because someone else someone is involved else. yeah that's I am less likely, <laughs> yeah, no doubt, <laughs> to do that than I am to make it a full-blown experience mm -hmm. for myself. And mm. that feels radical. It is radical. <laughs> I, it's not even something that I've ever done. Uh, the dressing up part, I mean. there, There's something, so I've been listening to Louise's sexual, spiritual, sensual, um, SSS CDs on and off for the last two weeks, pretty solid. And I heard her say something about, um, oh crap, the words just left my mind. I wrote them down somewhere, I can't even tell you where. It was about me in relation to someone else. It was about, like there's leaps that we make, so I'm in a relationship and therefore these are all the things that I need to do now. 
and then your happiness like this is the presupposition of most relationships your happiness is my problem yeah <laughs> is for me to make happen or not um your sexual needs are for me to take care of um emotional needs spiritual needs like all of it it all falls into there um and really having those conversations with our partners about about how that can and would and should and has in the past played out being important conversations to have that was not my experience prior to the last say four years to well probably seven eight years but to actually even have a conversation to enter into a conversation with my partner about my physical needs my sensual needs my intimacy my level of vulnerability the things that I hold valuable inside of me and to be witnessed in our intimacy this was something that she had said but to be witnessed in my own intimate act and maybe that is just lotioning my body maybe that's just dancing to a song that happens to come on the radio um, that it really must be an invitation to join me in that and then there's power and potency in being witnessed in that and then there's power and potency in it not having to have a happy ending that me dancing in the living room and you watching me is intimate enough some days that's all I want and I want you to see me in that and I want you to respect that it doesn't mean we're going to put something in a hole at the end of it <laughs> amen and and you know I, something she was talking about I, I've been writing chapters down so we can bring it up again in the experience mm -hmm. like specific ones um, That leap of where our physicalness and our energetic selves, our, our spirituality, meet. And there's, a, there's an automatic, like it's just one highway, it runs into the next one of like, okay, so I have some sort of arousal and so that's going to equate to something physical at the end. And, and it's like pulling back or you know reevaluating those levels of highways or those pathways even and and going no sometimes it's just it's just brushing my hair like we were talking about mm -hmm. before yeah I, I don't know what else I'm going to say about it but I know that it's radical I know that it's not I was never taught anything about conversation in relation to that usually it's weird and awkward and I've had the benefit of having a few conversations with my teenager who's now in a relationship um, in the last we'll say the last week or so um, just now realizing oh man that trajectory that happens in mainstream is just from here to here that fast mm -hmm. and how much beauty and and to slow it down and to hold hands I remember having a boyfriend in, in high school well boyfriends probably <laughs> We'll air quote that. I don't know that we were really boyfriend and girlfriend, but we spent time together. Um, <coughs> excuse me, that was probably really loud. Uh, and we would sit parked in his vehicle for hours, and we would hold hands, and we would, like, caress each other's hands. For hours we did that, for hours. What felt like days in this moment. Way, like... It's for a teenager to have attention spans to do that and it not to go somewhere else. Like, I'm just remembering this right now in this moment mm -hmm. of how awesome that was, how connected I felt, how cherished I felt, how special and to share that moment with him and it, and it not leading anywhere else. There might have been some kissing, but, but nothing more than that. And I want that for my children. I want them to know that that is what we have access for, to right from the beginning. And the more they luxuriate in those moments at your kids' ages, the more likely they are to have it their whole lives instead of you know, being 40 and discovering intimacy for the first time, which is very, very common with the women that I've had contact with. And I think about your kids as they're, you know, as Seamus is making French toast for his dad or he's making his eye pillows or whatever. There's a sensuality in that because they can weave in and out of it with their own impulse. That's where it comes from is mm -hmm. I have a thought. I'm going to rub myself on this couch right now or I'm going to put extra maple syrup on my 
uh, handmade, you know, French toast. I'm going to serve it to my dad and I'm going to listen as he eats it. Because that's part of it. Their experience of him eating the, the food that they've made for him. Um, when we're allowed to indulge in all of that, we have that need, that desire. We satiate it. We're more likely to satiate it and live from that place than we are if it's shut down. I feel like we're having the five-week conversation all in today's <laughs> conversation. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I really hope that those who are called to this experience listen to this one specifically because I feel like we've really like gone down there somehow. Well, again, it's not like just the surface level of what we want to talk about. It's mm-hmm. how it integrates itself into our lives. And so we set the intention that we're going to do this. And now we just have to stay present to how it weaves itself mm-hmm. into our world. Yeah, totally. So I just thought of the fella from the aquaponics place yesterday. <clears throat> I'm a sensual person. And I wouldn't have said that a few years ago. But I like to hug. It's what I like to do. It's how I show my gratitude for people. And, and he shared his life and his work and his soul and his intention for his life with us. And at the end of it, I'm like, oh, thank you so much. And I went to give him a hug. And it was an awkward, like, sort of holding me away hug. And and just being, you know, dis- as we engage this five-week process, as each of you step in, there's going to be moments that are absolute magic, <laughs> moments that are complete bombs, moments where you realize where someone else isn't willing to meet you there, where you weren't willing to meet. You know, maybe somebody tries to hug you and you're like, whoa, too much step back or or somebody from your past that you have a lot of history with you don't feel safe with um, watching those moments feeling those moments being aware of those moments not having to do anything about those moments but fully living them and that moment of recognizing when another physical body is feeling really weird about this stranger putting yeah. their hands on you um, you know that's an example of an everyday lived experience and that's what people have to look forward to in this this experience unrelenting nothing is off the table real live tactical sensual spiritual sensual I think I said that already sacred magical um, fully alive experience I feel like it makes you aware of your moment to moment evolution Mm -hmm. and then you, you get to a place where you can't not know what you know so you just grow (laughs) it's where our sacred selves our essence of who we are the I am that I am that lights up this tissue it's where our essence meets our tissue is where you find the magical spiritual essential I feel like it's it's that point of inception when the sperm and the egg touch and the there's a flash of light there's a little a literal flash of light at the moment of conception i feel like that's what we're touching that moment of conception that moment of where everything is raw and vulnerable and real and and totally right before the moment of birth uh, the birth of an experience the birth of an idea a thought a relationship um or death that's interchangeable as well it might be an uh a death as well but it's it's that moment that magical little atom of the universe that's what we're going to play with oh my gosh oh I just feel like you can't see what I'm doing but I'm like like I just want to cherish that it, 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 it I want to hold gently that seed so that it grows in all aspects of my life and becomes potent to those around me that's pretty cool (laughs) yep that teeny tiny seed just under the snow Mm. in the first layer of the earth waiting to be seen surrounded by all the fertility you could ever want and all of the relationships and connections and interconnections and serendipitous relationship around you it's totally abundant so I'm going to send an invitation this is going to be a plug well, a couple of plugs. Uh, number one, I hope you made it this far, and I appreciate it if you did. If this is a conversation and an experience that calls to you, please reach out to us, just like immediately, like just do it. 
Um, the other plug I'm going to share is I've been engaged in Charles, Charles Eisenstein. For those of you who know him or don't know him, it's Charles Eisenstein dot org I think is or dot net is his website address he is he has a an online course workshop experience I don't know what to call it and it's called living the gift or living in the gift and it's about a lot of what we spoke about today it's about living and being and emanating from this place of abundance and connection and relationship and trust and safety and beautiful magic and and how a gift mindset or a gift way of being will perpetuate that in your life and 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 we're taken care of in that and I think that this experience with the magical spiritual central is not separate from that um so he has a pay what you can policy pay what feels right you can pay whatever you want up front or nothing and then pay later on or nothing it is just for yours your your presence to enjoy so i've been doing this it's online you can go on his website and sign up for it and it is absolutely magical i think it coincides and goes hand in hand with what we're going to be exploring in the next five weeks so that's the last thing i want to share no i just want to put out the invitation to be aware of when you feel anything that you feel and just stay present to it because the notion's already there Mm -hmm. if you're listening to this you've already heard something yeah so stay present reach out let us know what it evokes what it moves inside of you I love those stories Mm -hmm. I love it Mm -hmm. that's the depth that's the passion that's Mm -hmm. yeah those are the conversations I get out of bed for. Mm-hmm. What is the conversation? What is it that you need to say yes to yourself in your own world? Yes to this experience or yes to whatever else it is you're creating? Anything else, Megan? No, I'm golden. Thanks for joining us.